Uh, so let's go ahead and, and at least get started. I'll give you some basics on uh, what we're doing today, and um, also give you a little introduction to um, what the webinar concept is all about. Um, so if this is your first visit um, to Creative Stage uh, webinar series, we're pleased to have you join us. And we hope you find the information today valuable, and that you'll join us frequently for future events. Uh, for those of you who have been with us before, welcome back. And thanks for returning. Uh, we appreciate your ongoing interest and are glad you found the previous webinars worthwhile. Uh, we've received a lot of encouragement from you and outstanding feedback, uh, which is really helping to drive this series. And one of the things that we're definitely um, you know, interested in and recommending is if you could please uh, continue to give us your input. Uh, we're, we're definitely looking to be very uh, responsive to that in terms of planning um, of future events. Kevin? Yes. John, you're back. Yes. OK. All right, so I, I went through and we, we started doing a little brief intro here. Um, I'm assuming that right now uh, everybody can hear both of us, and uh, we've got things up and running. Um, before we get formally started, uh, I'd like to give those of you who are new to us uh, a quick overview of the structure of the webinar so that you know what to expect. Uh, the webinars are intended to be uh, educational and informational in nature. Uh, our goal is to focus on issues and technologies that are affecting the landscape of the entertainment lighting industry. Uh, we work close, closely with uh, industry experts and leading manufacturers uh, to develop programs and content designed to answer some of the key questions facing all of us. Um, the webinar itself is scheduled to run about an hour. The first 40 to 45 minutes of this uh, LED 101 webinar will focus on giving you a better understanding of the technology itself, the advancements going on within the LED market, and examples of the type of LED fixtures that are available, Color Kinetics products for our examples, along with some actual LED applications to give you a better idea of how these technologies can be utilized. During the session, we'll also be polling the audience to give you feedback on a variety of topics regarding LED. Uh, to give you an example, uh, what we'll do is we'll just do a brief poll here now uh, to get a better idea of the makeup of the audience. Uh, if you'll just give us your input, uh, basically what we're looking to find out is how you categorize your organization. Uh, are you in education, uh, church or house of worship, uh, theater and the performing arts, a uh, production company, rental house, or a other kind of lighting dealer, uh, or you de deal primarily in permanent installations. So if uh, you take a couple of minutes to fill that out for us, uh, we'll give everybody some feedback. We have everybody's input. And again, for those of you who haven't joined us in the past, uh, previous sessions included uh, Richard Kadena uh, talking about the state of the industry and uh, building your career in, in entertainment lighting. Uh, we've also had one with, uh, with high-end Embarco Systems uh, regarding converging technologies. And both of those are available on uh, the Creative Stage Lighting website as podcasts. So if anybody hasn't had an opportunity to see them and is interested, they are available. OK, looks like uh, pretty much everybody has voted on this. Um, basically, um, the answers um, that you gave to us how would you categorize your organization? 17% uh, 17, uh, 17 of you say you're in education. 12% uh, say you're in church or, church or house of worship. 21% uh, in theater or the performing arts. 40% uh, in production companies, rental houses, lighting dealers. And 12% as permanent installers. So um, thank you for your input. And uh, we'll have some others of those as we, um, as we go along. Um, at this point, what I'd like to do is um, give you some background on our presenter today. Uh, John Malello is from um, Philips Color Kinetics Lighting. Uh, many of you have known the co company p uh, previously as Color Kinetics. Uh, they are the leader in the development of new LED technology and an innovator in the field. Uh, John's been with Color Kinetics for over six years and has helped the company to introduce a variety of new products in the market, including the recent introduction of the Color Reach fixture with an output of over 5,000 lumens and uh, light projection of over 500. John regularly conducts educational forums for color kinetics and has provided in, sorry, informational classes throughout the Northeast. Some of the projects John has worked on include the Boston Garden, Shrek the Musical, the Marriott Customs House Tower in Boston, and the historical Old North Church. 
Uh, please join me in welcoming John Malello. John, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I, I apologize right up front. Um, I'm having a slight problem on my computer here. I'm just getting restarted right now, so um, I kind of memorized the slides for the most part, but I'm going to ask you to just be patient while I kind of go through my computer and as I um, get back logged in with you folks. But um, thanks so much, Kevin. Um, the, um, the first slide that's uh, being shown there is, uh, I believe, of the London Eye. It's an, applica it's an application we did with some of our um, LED uh, color test fixtures that um, allow, you, allow the entire Ferris wheel, the largest Ferris wheel in the world, to change colors um, with the touch of a button. Uh, previously, they were using a fluorescent light source uh, and changing out lamps on a very regular basis. Um, but they decided they wanted to do something a little more dynamic, and so the best way to do that would, would, would be with LED technology. Um, it's very exciting. I mean, this is just one of numerous applications that are using LED technology today. Um, it's um, something in which uh, you'll see a lot more and more uh, opportunities to use LEDs. Um, the next slide would be of the Custom House Tower, which is in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, it's showing uh, the fact that we now can use LED lighting using for white light applications. It's, a, it's, a, and it's an energy savings as well as a maintenance savings. Uh, previous to using uh, LED system, they were using a halogen source, which had to change out lamps every few thousand hours. And once they uh, had a chance to, to make the change to using LED, it saved them 67% of their electricity costs, and it saved them on all the maintenance as well. So very, very, very exciting uh, times here in the LED world. Um, uh, Kevin, the next slide would be the um, the the history of LED. Yep. But yeah. So the 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 LED itself was founded. Uh, the visible LED was founded back in 1962 with a gentleman named Honiak. Um, he was a uh, professor uh, up at Syracuse and worked for GE. Um, in the plastics department, and he decided that he was looking into different types of, uh, of ways to use um, LEDs and see if he could actually get any kind of visible light out of it. And under a microscope, he saw this little hue when he actually gave power to this semiconductor device, uh, which was called an LED at the time. Um, he didn't think very anything, anything uh, of it, really. General Electric, for the most part, shelved the idea of actually doing any kind of R&D on there. Um, and then a gentleman named Monsanto at Hewlett Packard, um, the computer company, the mainframe computer, computer company, was, um, was thinking that he would actually do a uh, look into it more because they wanted to use LEDs as indicator lights. They knew that LEDs lasted a long time, and they knew that it actually gave a slight light, but they wanted to use it on an everyday basis. So they started using LEDs only as indicator lights. So to let people know whether or not um, uh, mechanisms or computers were either on or off. Um, that was the only reason why. Even today, you still see LEDs being used in your computer monitors, your televisions, uh, DVD players, wherever you see a, a little green hue or a red hue of light, they're using LEDs. Um, just think to yourself, when was the last time you actually saw one of those lights go out on any of those items? So it was very, very exciting. Um, time to, um, to be able to uh, use it on a, on, a, on a daily basis. The, the um, LEDs kind of more in the 70s where you started seeing them being used in calculators. Uh, that was the, the biggest thing. Whenever you press the side of your calculator watch, you would have a, a slight green hue, and it would allow you to see the digital dis display on the, on the watch itself. So we primarily only had red color LEDs and then we went to green LEDs. And not until the early 90s 